Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Down to Earth Astronomy. If any of you watch my recent mining uh, update in 2.1 regarding the ice mining, I briefly mentioned that there's been some debate on the forum regarding where you should actually drop down your ship when you are mining in a ring around a planet. The debate started because people were discussing where it would be best to mine these uh, diamonds or to find the ice fields. Um, and I decided to, to test this out. I've, um, so what I've done is I found um, a ring like uh, the one below us right here. And the argument is should you drop down in the high density area, which is the light one right here, where the rocks are tightly packed, or should you go out in the area maybe here, where there's more space in between the rocks. The argument was that if you go down to the area where there's more space between the rocks, because of the game, the way because of the way the game is programmed, there should be a certain amount of material in each uh, like volume. So because there are fewer rocks, the density of each rock should then be better. Um, that is at least what people have been uh, have, have been arguing over. So I decided to test it out, and here's what I've done. I um, I first went down to one of these high density areas and I've scanned 250 individual rocks and each time I encountered either uh, palladium, platinum or painite, which is the three most valuable materials you, material you will find in these rings, I would record the density of the rock um, and also just, just write that down. So I did that 250 times. Then I went to the low density areas and did the exact same thing. I scanned 250 rocks, wrote down the density um, of each rock, and with that information I went out and did the statistics, simply to see is it better to mine in the high density areas or should you go for the low density areas. Um, and I'll put up uh, one of the graphs here, um, and as you can see, this is for uh, palladium in a high density area. And what we're looking at here, at the horizontal, uh, the x-axis, we have the density of the rock. Um, so that is, when you scan the rock with a prospector, if it says 20% um, palladium, then it would be 20 on the lower x-axis. The vertical uh, y-axis, which says probability, that is how likely it is to find that specific uh, density if you scan a random rock. So what we can see is this curve basically shows us what is the chance of getting a certain percentage or higher when scanning um, when scanning a rock. So, for instance, if we look at uh, zero density, we see there's, there's a probability of around 13%. So that means that I, when I went into the high density area, I found that 13% of the rocks contained palladium. And they contained 0% or higher. So if I, for instance, wanted to know what is the chance that I would get a rock that contained 20% or more, I would go out, I would look at density, at the x-axis, that's 20%. I would go up and say, that line crosses at around 7.5%. So that would be a seven and a half percent that I would get a probability of um, of uh, so that's a seven and a half percent that I would get a density higher than twenty percent when mining in a high density ring and mining for palladium. And I did this for, of course, these three uh, the most three valuable materials, and um, the graph for all the materials in high density areas is shown here. Now, the probability here, as you can see, uh, is lower for each um, material. So, of course, as you would expect, palladium is more common than platinum, and again, painite is the most uh, uncommon or the most rare material. And actually, I only found just above 3% of the rocks contained platinum. An interesting thing to note is that it all seems to converge towards around half a percent 
regardless of their initial values. Um, so that's the graph for, for the high density area. Now if we add the same graphs but for the low density areas, we can see that the values doesn't really change that much. I mean, yeah, there are some, some, some small deviations. Um, there's, a, there's a fairly large deviation on platinum. Uh, it seems to be that you are more likely to find platinum in, uh, in low density areas. But again, I only did this on 250 rocks. This might be down to statistical um, uncertainties simply because of my small ensemble size. So if I had more time and I spent uh, more time scanning more rocks, I would maybe get better statistics. So I'm not really sure. I mean, the difference between those are not great enough to, to to finally conclude that it's better to go one place or another. And especially if you go and have a look at the high uh, high density part of the of the graph, let's say above 20%, the difference is not really that great. I mean, we're looking at a quarter percent, a half a percent maybe sometimes, and uh, if you even look at that graph it should be more likely to get the high density uh, palladium in the uh, in the high density, in density areas where the rocks are closely packed. So what it looks like to me from these graphs is what you maybe would expect, that for each ring the probability that a rock contains a certain material is fixed for for that specific ring. Um, so the the only argument that could be that you should go into a lower density area would be if you maybe are in a large ship and you're having a hard time maneuvering in, in the high density area, then yeah, sure, go into an area where you where you think that the density fits your ship. Um, I personally prefer the uh, the high density area where there is uh, a lot of materials, simply because that. I can then sit um, and scan a lot of rocks from from one location and then decide which one I'm going to go for. And then from that I can then scan the next set of rocks uh, in front of me. Um, so in, in conclusion, I don't really think it matters where you uh, where you go. Um, that said, it of course matters with the type of ring you go into. You should definitely go for the, the metallic ring. If you go into rocky rings, you will definitely get uh, worse material. And another point is, I have not tested the actual resource extraction sites. Um, I might do that in another video in the future. But the reason why I haven't done it is mainly because this takes a long time to do. And I will also have to try and research what is the actual radius of these uh, resource extraction sites. How far can you go away from the initial uh, drop-in before you are considered outside of, uh, of the extraction site. So I haven't figured all that out yet, might do it in the future. And another thing here at the end, if you uh, feel like it, if you're sitting and if you're a miner like me, um, and you want something to do while mining, go ahead, make a spreadsheet, um, record your findings, uh, write down the amount of rocks that you've scanned and the density you get of each rock, and email it to me. My email is in the description below. And I will uh, incorporate uh, your data into this model and then maybe in the future if I get enough data um, we can do an updated uh, uh, updated statistics uh, statistic, uh, updated statistics video where we can look into a bit more detail maybe have a bit better statistics um, but with the data I have I cannot finally conclude that it's better to go in one place or the other it's simply down to preference of how closely packed you like to have uh, the rocks um, so that's it thanks a lot for watching um, I hope you find this video uh, useful or informational. If you did, consider giving the video down below, maybe subscribe to the channel. This has been Down to Earth Astronomy, and until next time, have a good one.